Lauren Fisher. I'm the archivist here at the Peterson Automotive Museum. I'm actually down in one of our collection areas where we have our motion picture film collection, our library, and other archival materials as well. You can see that we have a climate controlled room behind me. Um, this is kept at around 4.4 to 4.6 degrees Celsius and at around 35 to 36 percent humidity. And we do have our acetate based motion picture film in here. Um, we're going to go ahead and go inside. We're actually in the antechamber right now, and basically this room is meant to stabilize the humidity and temperature when you're passing in between rooms. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go into the actual vault. This is where we store our motion picture film collection. Uh, we do have it separated by 16 millimeter and 35. Uh, here's some of the stuff that we've been working on. It's nicely labeled, and then that's all the stuff we have to work on. Um, it's very chilly in here, but it was a big accomplishment to get this installed. This was brought to us courtesy of the Amundsen Foundation, uh, and they provided the construction of the vault as well as some film inspection equipment and new archival film cans and cores. Um, I'll go ahead and open up a film can for you to kind of show you what we're working with. So here's something that's already been inspected. We have our new location, our new identifier on it, and of course a label. And it has been rewound on a new archival core, and also a new leader has been put on it as well. It's been safely stored in the proper size can and neatly tucked away for easy identification. Uh, and hopefully we can get to the rest of it as well pretty soon. Uh, it's very cold in here, so I'm going to take you on a tour of some of the other areas. Um, Moving forward, we actually have the rest of our collection area. Uh, this is actually only one of the collection areas in the entire museum. It, this, our collection actually expands the entire length of the vault downstairs where we store over two city blocks worth of material. So if we move down here, on this particular side we have our Peterson Publishing Periodical Collection. Uh, we start with Carcraft, alphabetically of course. Um, we have two collections for each Peterson periodical. We have an archive collection and a public collection. Um, we keep three copies of the archive for the archive collection. Those are our best, most pristine copies. And those are used for digitizing or maybe perhaps display. And then our public copies are going to be copies that people can access publicly to do research or look something up. Um, let me go ahead and open up an older box for you for fun. Here's Hot Rod 1965. We do store them on our sides, you'll see why. So that the magazines don't basically bow or bend inside of the box. And this is our January 1965 issue of Hot Rod Magazine. So we do have several Peterson publications. We almost have full collections of many of the titles, though we are missing issues here and there. One of our biggest projects right now is to actually inventory the entire Peterson periodical collection so we can create a wish list of issues that we might be missing from the collection. So look for that so you can maybe help us fill out our collection. The periodical collection extends all the way back here. And then if you come this way, this area is a little bit of a work in progress, but if you can imagine, this is basically some of, only some of the archival material that we have to sort through in the coming years. Um, we have everything from periodicals to brochures to books as well. Um, so one of our jobs is to basically go through each box. We like to take a few boxes down each week inspect them, pull out the you know, fragile stuff, and put them in proper archival boxes. You can see these are not proper archival boxes. The museum's been collecting for over 25 years now, and um, some of our donations don't always come to us in archival boxes as well. Over here is our kind of small little library. See, library area, these are bound copies of Carcraft Magazine, Hot Rod Magazine, Motor Trend, and um, 
you can see, these are from Robert Peterson's personal library. So we do have his collection of bound copies of Carcraft magazine. These we like to use if we're doing quick research so we don't have to pull down an issue. Uh, magazines, especially older ones, tend to be very fragile, especially on the binding and the paper. So if we can refer to these books, we do. If you come this way, we have our rare book case. Um, this is where we keep some of our most fragile or rare books um, and some books that need repair, which we like to do once in a while. Uh, we do have an autograph collection as well. So anything that's fragile or very rare goes in here with me. Further down into our basement area, I'm gonna take you into the photography vault. And this is going to be the area that we store all of our photo assets. And these are going to be negatives and transparencies from the Peterson Publishing Collection. So a lot of the material, in fact, most of the material in here that you see will be from the Peterson publishing era. And um, we go up to the 90s and 2000s with some of the material. Uh, and a lot of this material was rescued um, from Peterson publishing and other publishing endeavors that uh, acquired Peterson publishing. So what we have down here is Michelin Man resting comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have, throughout this entire area, the photo negative collection. So these are mostly going to be the black and white negatives from Peterson Publishing. Now, each story, the photographer would often, you know, fill out the whole roll and only a few images were used for an issue. And so what we have would be that entire role. So perhaps an image from a story didn't make it in the issue, but we have more to digitize. Currently we have 1.5 million images digitized. They can be seen at archive.peterson.org. And we're certainly working on more. There are almost 10 million negatives in the collection. So I'll go ahead and pull this out for you. So you can kind of see. We have our black and white negative. And then of course we have our information that actually goes back to the Peterson publishing era. We have a sleeve number, we have a date, we have a periodical, and sometimes a photographer as well. We do access these by sleeve number, so I'm gonna put this back in the right place. And then these particular boxes are going to be our color files. Um, if it's in a blue box, that means it went out for digitization a couple years ago. And these are going to be a little later, probably 70s onward. And part of the SEMA sponsored project or grant that we digitize these images with uh, provided us with the ability to buy new archival folders and sleeves for the slides as well. You can see they've been resleeved painstakingly by our, our archival workers who worked on the project. Um, and each color file has a number as well that correlates to a database entry. Now you're gonna, you see a, probably a lot of filing cabinets here. Um, this is going to include a lot of strange older stuff that came from Peterson Publishing. Now Peterson had a research library basically for journalists to do research when they're writing a story. And so everything's categorized by topic or make or model. And so we like to go through here and see what kind of information we have uh, and also add it to the collection of material we have on things already in our own archive. So it's, these past few years have been the combining of the old Peterson Publishing Research Library Archive as well as our own material to create a more holistic research resource. One fun thing I can show you this way. This 
not the most glamorous area, but it's the space we could get. You can see we have a lot of material. Back here, we have some of the original Hot Rod Magazine work envelopes. Uh, workers at Peterson often called them job bags, but um, basically a story would have an envelope. You have the date here with the year, the name of the article, and inside we have mock-ups, notes, um, perhaps photo prints as well of the article that's to be published. It's fun to look back and see what was published, what wasn't, and what the notes were for each article. Now, believe it or not, the collection actually expands all the way that way, but I don't want anyone to get lost, so we won't take you back there today. Just to show you the extent of how much material we have from Peterson Publishing, I'll take you down this way. These boxes contain color files that may not have been digitized yet. Some may have, and they were just refiled. Um, but most likely, most of this is not digitized. I mean, we've got hundreds of boxes of sli color slides. And then this way, we have even more, and then of course the extension of our black and white negative as well and these wrap all the way around down here and so do our color files as well when we get back here we actually get more towards the research files um, these are going to contain again files from peterson publishing that were organized usually by make model topic race event um, sometimes personality as well or you know if it's a concept car the working name and um, these, again, are basically research resources that were compiled for Peterson Publishing Research Library. Uh, and journalists would use them to write new stories or share information with each other as well. We've got hundreds of these boxes as well. Thank you so much for joining me on a behind the scenes look of the archival areas at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Comment down below what your favorite part was and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.